Uh, hi, Kate. Hi, Adam. We're gonna have some fun today because I am working on my Star Lord costume Ooh. for Silicon Valley Comic Con. This is um, a friend of mine is a Star Lord obsessive, and he built these files for this print. Um, they're stupidly accurate. This is beautiful. Isn't that great? Yeah. Um, and I have all the bits and bobs for it. Um, I have not quite yet figured out how I'm going to wear it. Okay. <laughs> um, however, it um, it does it actually fits me perfectly. Ooh, my! Like really nice and close. <laughs> I think people are going to tell from my forehead almost right away. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so Mel is currently working on the eyes. Okay. Um, and the electronics for the eyes, but I these need uh, this needs a full paint job, and I have a whole bunch of parts. There's leg rockets, there's rocket controllers, there's gun parts, um, and it all needs it all needs some love and some sanding and some paint. All right, we've got um, our work cut out for us then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, luckily, Prop Store sold one of these helmets a couple of years ago, that reference. and we have phenomenal. And actually, when you in digital form. It's like you can really see every yeah. little weathering mark. I um, like that. Yeah. So we have fabulous, fabulous reference for this. Um, I, oh, also, actually just one sec. <clears throat> I did this, I did this for you last night because I thought it would be a fun, you know, mostly painting is an exercise in the exhausting art of masking yeah. and all that. Well, so uh, this came in multiple pieces and rather than glue them all together, I actually installed little screw bosses uh, and metal threads so that the whole thing comes into pieces. Bless you. I know, right? <laughs> Thank you so much. So that should make that a much easier. That is amazing. Yeah. Oh, yay. <laughs> So um, I figure you can have control over all of this back here. Ooh, my own table. Yes. Um, two airbrushes, we got the turntable here. These are the leg rockets. I think what you might wanna do for the first period of time is just wrap your head around all the different dumb yeah. chunks of this thing. Yeah. Um, and let me, I guess I can walk you around and show you the pieces. Uh, leg rockets. So I have enough for three leg rockets. Um, so that's what one looks like. It's got these guys, yeah, these guys like that. Awesome. And then these drop in there. Cool. And then these slot in here. Whoa. Yep. And then on the back side of this is a panel which gets screwed in. Okay. And then there's this little doohickey here which I'll do a mechanical connection on. Nice. Because this, part locks into this, which sits on the leg. Oh, okay, so it kind of slides into lock? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, there'll be magnets that we install both here and here. Yes. And that helps line all this oh, up. Oh, I love magnets. Isn't that great? Yes. Yeah, that should be really, really cool. Um, right, so that's leg rockets. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. That's leg rockets, and so there's those guys. So three of those, three uh, sets I actually of those. just need two. Oh, perfect. I have enough for Spare. three. Spare. Yeah. Good. Uh, these are holsters. Don't worry about those. We'll worry about those when we have the guns. Okay. Ah, I, I have these leg rockets, and this is centered nylon, and this is SLA, and these are, like, these, the, 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 the print quality is fine, mm -hmm. but I also made these yesterday. Of course you did. <laughs> Because I thought it's beautiful, right? Especially when you do the like, uh, like the Guardians movie is full of um, like uh, blue and purple rocket burning on metal. Yeah, that yeah. look. Yeah. And I thought it'd be really fun to do those translucent colors mm. on real aluminum. Yes. So that's so, a little bit of model making to do. On maybe the, slice off the top yeah, and replace so it with that. I, look, I know the two centered nylon ones are the two best castings. Okay. I would I would figure out. I would figure out which of the two SLAs, which of these four are, which two are better. Okay. And then, yeah, I think that the way I've done this lip is you should be able to maybe cut it kind of there uh -huh. and then use the belt sander to kind of take it down and be able to slot that right in there. Sure. 
All right. I know that's within your capability. <laughs> There's a nice lip within here, so that'll just, yeah. that's great. Um, and then, you know, we can glue that and paint this, and even if the silver of this doesn't match exactly, that's fine, because it's all getting dirty. Yeah. Ooh, so there's a lot of chrome in this costume, right? All the silvers are quite shiny silver, okay. so it's all gonna be molto. I was just gonna ask. It's all gonna be molto, and it's all gonna be sealed with the all, all clad, clad, too. All yeah. Um, that gives us, this is all that we have, I think. Oh, okay. That should be enough to yeah. do all the sealing. Um, it gets particular around here. All right. And then, yeah, and then all the dirt goes over the all clad. Okay. That's nice to know, that you can cover up the chrome with a little dirt, because it can we, be a little, you know, nerve-wracking. Yeah. yeah, we gotta, yeah, we gotta be able to beat back the, the barbarian hordes with that stuff. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, only two of these need painting, and it's definitely these two. All right. These are the, uh, those are the centered nylon ones. Don't worry about that guy. This guy is a, yeah. I, Mel is working on printing up one more of these because right. we don't, we're missing one part and it's the part that goes, it's a little thing that drops in here. All right. And gives some dimension. And do we have reference for these as well? We do. Cool. Yeah, I have crap tons of reference. Perfect. And uh, I'll show you my laptop and you can print up anything you need. Great. All right, so moving on over here. These are rocket controllers. They live on the legs. Okay. These also get a silver construction. I actually have a pair that we did in SLA. Um, and this is just, I colored the Molto on them and ah. then hit it with an oil wash. It's not that great, but that's a great example of what they're gonna look like. Perfect. Um, and these are better prints, so I'd love to just replace these with those. All right. And with these, you think airbrushing the Molto on? I do, right. yeah, yeah, and I have the refill canisters, so you can thin it and Perfect. spray it. These are a lot of the face parts that sit on. Oh, also, paint test. We have some pieces for oh, paint good. testing. Oh, good, thank you. Yeah, I love testing. I know. Uh, so wow. that's for paint testing. These guys, wait there. These guys sit, this, is, this would have been the worst part of all the masking. And they sit right there <sighs> with a little bit, I know. Yay. Isn't that the best? <laughs> with a little bit of um, braided cable between them. We'll have to right. find some sort of high-end, like iPhone charging cable from Best Buy. Okay. Uh, these guys get chromed, and I think they get chromed before we assemble. All right. Because I polish these aluminum tubes and they go in and go around. Right. Um, these are part of this business. And again, let's just paint everything separately. Yeah. Uh, and do a final wash to tie it all together. Cool. There's screen, there's a piece of screen that sits in here, and the way the lip works, it's gonna be tough. All right. But I have some copper screen up there from my Hellboy build. Okay. Uh, some uh, brass screen. Yeah. And I figure it's just a matter of cutting, 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 and getting it. Like, he's left a space so you can kind of get your finger in All there. All right, so it's gonna go in from the back. It's, it's not gonna, gonna go in from the top. back because okay. there's a tiny lip right there. Ah. And so it sits right up against All right. that. All right. And then this guy snaps in half and it's like, it sits right in there and goes up against that. We have a Marvel, uh, uh, Hero's mask, so you could use as, oh, as, as assembly perfect, reference. Perfect, perfect. And I don't know what these or these are. <laughs> <laughs> Greeblies. I've written, yeah, exactly. Um, I've, written to, I've written to Joe Trash, who built these files, to ask what that is. But that's the basic lay of the land. <sighs> There's also the guns, oh, wow. which I have not yet assembled, and I made a mistake because I didn't ask for two. So we're getting a second one printed up. Okay. And that actually, I don't know if you're available next week, but that may be a next week thing to come in and, and do all the all the painting on these. Sure. And again, everything on these guns is separate, so the painting should be a real nice breeze. But we have to figure out mechanically how to attach all this stuff together. Right. So when I have the second one, that may be what I do for part of the day tomorrow is figure out how to mechanically put these together so we can take them back apart again right. and then do all the painting. Right. Clear as mud? Oh yeah. <laughs> I, re I remember everything you just told me. I won't ask a single question on it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna set you up with the folder of ref reference materials so you can start to walk through it. Perfect. Um, I have just so much printed material of this helmet under all sorts of different circumstances. You can start to crawl through all of that. Yay. And oh yeah, here's that wire you were talking mm -hmm. about, the mesh, yeah. This is, I think most of these are the hero mask. Uh, if anything, I want to go for the slightly more beat up version. I really like the uh, the chipped 
Yes. Chip paint up on the brow Everything there. looks better after it's weathered yeah. like that. Um, also, look at how... Wait, so one thing I noticed was how soft some of the lines are. And this is a classic model maker's thing, is that like you leave us to our devices and we're gonna make nice crisp lines. Right, but yeah, and that one has a real rounded on the so inside. Let's go ahead and like make sure we're nailing that. Yeah, I'll chamfer um, that up. Where these cheeks attach, that needs a little cleanup. Sure. And these parts were glued together, so that might be one of the very first things is do some spot puttying. Okay, so get rid of the seam. Yeah, we All gotta right. get rid of that. All right. Um, I don't think there's a seam on this guy. There is a seam on this guy, but I did a really good job yesterday. Yeah, I was yesterday. just gonna say, you did pretty good. <laughs> that was literally simply CA glue and about a full can of primer. Nice. Yeah, I dumped two whole cans of primer on this <laughs> last night. Yeah, that'll be easy. Yeah. Like, once it has the lights wrapped around it, my guess is it's actually gonna be fairly close fitting. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot of dimensionality here. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's, let's try that. Okay, yeah, I'll at least start cutting this guy, these guys out, and then I'll assemble one. Just get some. Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. So. That's perfect. It ain't pretty inside, but. No, that's fine. That looks great. Cool. What I'll, do you think? I've, I, I think, think when it we works. paint that, and yeah. this is disco silver. Um, yeah, we're great. Cool. And yeah, you've got plenty to just drop some glue in there. Awesome. Fabulous. So uh, this is the darker color for the mask, so the Malto is for all this stuff? Exactly. Okay, cool. Yep, I think Malto is for all the chromy chrome. Perfect. And if it's too shiny, it's even better for us. Right, I, I'm gonna go for shinier than the movie. Yes. And we'll end up with close to that, and even if it's too shiny, I'm down with that. So let's do that. <laughs> okay. And let's, if you hold that there, do that. Yes, okay, now. Oh! Yeah. Mel? Yeah. I think that looks great. I think it's cool. Yeah, all right. I like that you can, and it's giving that infinity mirror thing. Yeah. Um, and then I guess the test is if you can see through it. Right, oh, uh, yeah, go ahead and see if you can see my eye. You can see it a little bit. A little bit, but not too much. But I mean, like from that distance, you probably can't see it. Yeah. And um, how can you see out of it? Oh, yeah, so that was that's an interesting question. Oh, that's what you were wondering. Can I yeah. see through You're it? the one that has to walk around with it. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so for that reason, mm -hmm. the back has to be clear. Okay. And this, let's make the sides clear too. It'll allow more light transmission past here. Okay. All right? Let's do it. But that looks fantastic. I'm really, really happy with that. Rad. I love mechanical connections. I love that we were able to use the Pantone color and figure it actually out. Seriously. All right, straight up and down. It's not going anywhere. Heck yeah! Boom. So now I got to put these on the pants. I got to figure out which way is which way is forward. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh yeah, you got boot pictures. Let me see here. See, I'm curious about this guy, right? These are these are chiral. Uh huh. So I'm curious. Oh yeah. Which Good one question. goes? Right. That's what I'm interested in. I'm not sure if you can see that in the, these two. All right, I'll take a close look at the computer. So uh, in order to make the rockets actually clip onto the boots, uh, the system that, uh, that my friend Joe developed has magnets in the rocket body and magnets in the receiver body. And there's a lot of people that have done this exact solution, and I'll bet the real ones were similar. And then he's also got this little mechanical clip here so that you bring it up the slot and then it settles vertically and now it doesn't want to move off vertical, but more importantly, it doesn't want to fall off because of that clip. Like there's a little ledge in there, but taking it off is really easy and putting it on is really easy. So operates just like the film. I'm super psyched with how that came out. We're almost done with the boots and the pants. Uh, I gotta make a softer backside for these rocket controllers because they're digging into my legs. Gotta add one more rivet back here on the holsters and then, yeah, we're moving along. Star Lord's sidearms. Yes, there are two of them. And this is a picture of one of the hero weapons. And as you can see, it's a study in metallics, which is really neat. Like that's exciting. Uh, it's, a, it's a good looking gun. 
Um, and normally I was, well, up until about an hour ago, I was thinking that I would do these chromey metallics using um, my favorite technique of Molto chrome paint. It's a very high shine paint uh, sealed with all clad to sealer, uh, which, seem, which seals it and does not, uh, does not affect the shine at all. It's totally amazing. However, such a finish is still delicate. It can still be dented, it can still be scratched. And even though Star Wars weapons are, are a bit scratched up, a part of me wanted it to feel even more metallic. So I'm actually gonna use aluminum tape and I'm going to burnish and apply aluminum tape to these silver parts of the gun so I have an actual metallic finish. That'll make my painting and weathering a whole bunch easier when I finally get to it. Okay, so I've got the finished piece. It's been primered black. And so I'm just gonna steel wool it to prep the surface a little bit. A couple of inconsistencies, but again, Star-Lord's weapon is a bit beat up. So we can allow for some crimes as it were, some uh, holidays where things aren't perfectly finished. It's all in canon. Okay, so. I've got a roll here, yeah. So if you keep aluminum tape around, often uh, the outside like three or four wraps are gonna be pretty dinged up and I don't wanna use that. I'd like to start with a cleaner surface, so I'm gonna start with that. Uh, I'm gonna go, yeah, about, okay. Uh, now one of the things about the aluminum tape is it tends to curl when you pull off the backing, so you gotta hold the bottom, let the backing go. And I'm just going to arbitrarily do, yeah, let's try, let's try that. Okay, so we start with the burnish, just to find the extents and make sure I don't get any bubbles. And so I'm just, I'm starting off with a gentle rub and then moving to a slightly more vigorous as I go. And you can see the, the shape starting to reveal itself here. Now, down here, I want this joint to be really, a really nice flat line. And up here, I want the curl to also be good looking. So I'm gonna be very careful about this part. Okay, now I get a super sharp X-Acto blade Brand new one. And I start to do the cut. Now I'm using the actual dimensions of the piece to guide my X-Acto blade as I go. Yeah, oh yeah. The thing is, is there may be slight inconsistencies in your line, but when you do this out of metal, what the, what the people who look at this see is just the highlight from that corner. That highlight tells the entire story about this being made out of metal. It, it literally like draws your eye away from all the other nonsense that might give this away as just being covered in a foil. Yeah, so the more you burnish that, that edge, the better off you are. And again, if you look at the back side of the edge, it's not gonna be perfect, but that's okay, because you're really not gonna see it. Once you assemble this thing and start to actually weather it, your eye will go past all of those little inconsistencies. Ah, and you're wondering about these slots. That is the next thing. Do the second half of the cut from the other side.
Yeah, look at that. That looks like machined metal. Hit this with a little bit of steel wool. Yeah, look at that. That is a metallic finish. Woo. That is gonna age and weather beautifully. Um, I will have transition points to make here. I'll show you how those look when I concentrate on them. Here's one that I did earlier. You can see I've got a transition point there, but it's pretty hard to see unless you know what you're looking for. Same thing up top here. I actually have three little seams. Again, your eye doesn't really go to it. Um, that is, I'm really, really pleased with how that looks. And this gets this piece up here on top. And all of a sudden, we're on our way to a very respectable and beautiful looking Star-Lord sidearm. This was Star-Lord's belt. Uh, this is the one that I built uh, way back on the very first day I was starting to tackle this project. And it's okay, it's topologically correct. Uh, this is a, a metallic belt buckle that you can purchase online for like 10 bucks or something like that. It's, it's a little thin. Um, it just doesn't quite look very substantial. And when I looked at close-up pictures, it looked like they used thicker leather. So. I got some thicker leather and I got a better belt buckle. This is the belt buckle uh, designed by Joa Trash. So that is 3D printed in centered nylon, painted with all clad, protected with, uh, sorry, painted with Molto, protected with all clad too, and then weathered with a little oil paint. And as you can see, I've gone heavier with the leather and it's more substantial. And I'm, I'm really pleased with how this came out. Uh, so this is my old Star-Lord belt and new Star-Lord belt. Oh, also, yeah, these are uh, 3D printed buckles that are much more accurate than the pieces of aluminum that I cut out earlier. I'm painting the inside of under there where the uh, screens go, so it's black.
Okay, so now we do the other one. Adam has this. He did some work. He added these lovely bits here. He ran it over to me and now it is my time to start weathering. Now on this we're going to do a simple um, acrylic wash mixed with some um, alcohol and if you notice in the actual film it doesn't look like there's all that much weathering going on but since this is a prop you're going to be seeing in person, it's kind of nice to bring out a little more of that detail. This isn't something we're worried about the camera registering. This is something you want the human eye to see all these great dynamic parts. So I'm going to do my best to really make them pop. <laughs> Ooh, that was a relief. All right. <laughs> Got him. Right? Dude. Oh, yeah. I can totally see out of this thing. That's kind of mind blowing. Okay, I think it's time to try on the full costume. Nice. This is one of the more comfortable cosplays I've done. Well, we'll see. I mean, once I have the, all the crap on, it's going to get warm. Time for the coat. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. I think I've got it. Yes. Star-Lord's jewelry, an important part of the costume. The main pieces of this costume. My big takeaway for Star-Lord is that, man, this costume is a lot of work. There are a lot of pieces to get right in this costume. Um, so let's go from the ground up. Um, a few months ago, I found a pair of boots that were made uh, that are pretty darn accurate. I think the leather color is exactly right. They use the correct Skechers shoes uh, as their base because the production did that. They're actually quite comfortable. Um, the ankle rockets, I did engineer it so the ankle rockets could be removable, but I found that they kept on failing, so I simply bolted them in. So the leg rockets are mounted. I'm very pleased with the leg rocket paint job. Uh, Joe Atrash's files were very easy to assemble and their detail is fantastic. Um, moving up to the pants, these pants I bought from uh, an eBay seller. There are a bunch of different people making pants. Um, the volume one pants are hard to find and these aren't 100% correct. Um, there's many more variances in the fabric types and I think the color is a little bluer than it is green in the real one. Um, but these are really, these are the least accurate part of this costume and they're like 90%. Uh, rocket controllers, these were also uh, Joe Atrash's files. Those, uh, I riveted them to plates on the pants. Moving up to the belt, 
Uh, the belt I made twice. I made it first in a lightweight leather, and then I decided it was too lightweight, and so I made it in a heavier leather, uh, also utilizing uh, this beautiful print of the belt buckle that I put on there, and the, the little, uh, uh, whatever you call these things, little D-rings, trapezoidal rings. Um, of course, the Walkman has to be there. I built this one from scratch instead of spending $400 on a new old Walkman. Uh, the headphones I purchased on Amazon, they are imitation, but they work. Uh, they are uh, totally serviceable for the real thing. I know there are color variances. Um, again, not necessarily perfect, but plenty to communicate the Star-Lord costume. Uh, the bag is a Etsy purchase, and it is damn accurate. It's bigger than I thought it would be, frankly. And it's so weird in its color palette. I, it's just, I, I love the Ravager aesthetic. I love how um, all over the place, it's like kitchen sink design. Um, I weathered the bag significantly with a whole host of uh, leather dyes and paints and acetone and uh, took some color out, added some color, made it look really beat up, painted the, the handle there, sorry, the, the delta buckle. What do you call these? Anyway, the buckle. Then we've got the pendants, which I purchased from an Etsy seller. They are uh, resin and they look darn great. Um, the shirt, hard to say. It is a knit shirt that he's wearing with a color similar to this. Uh, I feel like I got the shirt pretty right. I actually cut the sleeves of the shirt so that I would not boil because I didn't need to wear a sweater in San Francisco heat wave that we're having right now. And the coat um, is really accurate. I'm really impressed. I cannot find the email correspondence of who I bought this coat from. So if it's you, please reach out because I'd like to know the provenance of the design of this coat. I did some things to make it more accurate. I added a couple of the little panels down here and I added some of the buckles that hold it together down here. These are things you can see in some of the promo shots of uh, Chris Pratt running with a beer in his hand. You can see some of the buckles on the inside. I like the way that it hangs. It feels like a piece of superhero gear. It's a really good cut and that's hard to find off off the rack, as it were. Um, the, uh, van, the van brace here and the shoulder pauldron, um, this coat came with a pair of them. I bought another pair on Etsy that were more accurate. Um, the shoulder was a little inaccurate here, so I trimmed that. Uh, I made the little hinge clasps that hold this to the jacket. Uh, and here, I actually modified this whole upper arrangement for the uh, forearm protector but it's great, it feels great, it's really lightweight, it comes off with the coat. Uh, and then finally, we've got this beautiful, beautiful helmet made as a collaboration between uh, me and everybody here in the shop. Um, the lights are gorgeous. Hold on, let's turn those on. Yeah, look at that. That is a beautiful helmet. Weathering done by the inimitable Kate Sabaker. I love the aesthetic of this film. This, it's funny, every costume I dive into, sometimes I'm not obsessed with the costume when I start, but I'm always obsessed by the time I finish. There are so many little details to parse and grapple with in this costume, from the piping on here. And you can buy the Marvel Legends helmet and it's really darn good. Honestly, it's phenomenal. It's just a little large for my taste. So I went with Joe Trash's print because it was much smaller and fit my head like a glove. But that meant I had to do all the engineering on the inside of attaching the side plates with screws. I made all my connections mechanical so I didn't have to undo glue later. Uh, that means that when I put this helmet on, I get bolted into this costume and I am in it until I'm out of it. <laughs> uh, that's a first. I have never been physically bolted into a costume before. Uh, I, of course, will be wearing this with contact lenses, and I, it wasn't su significantly fogging up the, uh, the, the, the gels on the inside, which I'm really grateful for, and it's impressively easy to see out of this thing. So, there you have it. The fruit of a larger amount of labor than I thought it was going to be, but Star-Lord is going to hit the Silicon Valley Comic-Con floor very soon.